What's up everyone, it's your boy Nolan Rad 89 here bringing you a fun video today. Today I wanted to discuss some horror sequels that I think did it right. These are ones that I think actually eclipse and are better than the film that started the franchise, whichever franchise that they exist in. That's not to say that the first film is a bad film, it's just saying like I'm here to show everybody in this video and kind of talk about that sequels do deserve a lot more respect because I am I'm one of those guys that I'm, I'm a franchise guy who likes diving into sequels and I like taking it into crazy places even if they want to take it to space or do it here or do modern updates like I always like and into into that for real like I'm one of those people that I'm just a sucker for and like I said today I'm going to talk about some of these sequels that I think are actually better than the original films. So let's do this right now and get into this video. Roll it! So I actually tried to keep it more to just sequels that I actually own and stuff like that. There's one in here that I really do want to talk about that I don't own. So when we get to that one, we'll discuss that one. But let's start right off because we're already diving into the Puppet Master franchise and we've been doing it. This is Puppet Master 2. And I think Puppet Master 2 is easily better than the first one. I do love the first one and fancy it. It's a really creepy film. It's got good atmosphere. And like I said, I give that film like an 8.5 or a 9 out of 10. Very strong film that first First film but I think the second film for me it just does everything that first film does but a little bit better and it actually throws in this kind of universal monster kind of 1940s you know that black and white horror feel it's very prominent in this one we have the music back we have some cool more uh, new puppet back it like, introduces into the crew so I think it's fantastic and I think the puppetry work looks really good and I find this one to be actually a little bit creepier and a little bit scarier than the first film. So yeah, Puppet Master 2 I think highly deserves to be on this list of horror sequels that were done right. Now on to another sequel and we're going to be talking about Return of the Living Dead Part 3 and yes, this one I think is a horror sequel done right mainly because Return of the Living Dead Part 1 and 2 are great. They are really good. I love the first one better than that second one. But they're kind of like a rehash. It's like the same film. It's almost how Sam Raimi did the Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2 thing. You know what I mean? And then we have Evil Dead 2013. Return of the Living Dead Part 1 and 2 are very, very similar. There's very little changes. Very similar casts and all kinds of stuff. And the layout's pretty much the same. But Return of the Living Dead Part 2 by Brian Usna, or I mean Part 3 by Brian Usna is when they really change it up. And they bring in, like I said, kind of a dark romance tale and stuff like that. And the, the designs right here, like Melinda Clark, oh my god, like right here, gorgeous. The design of this zombie is one of the best, great gore effects. And this one, like I said, is just one that I fancy because of that dark romance tale and it's completely different from the previous two but it takes place in the same universe so that's what I love you know what I mean films that sequels it's kind of hard to do that sometimes and I like when they keep it in the same universe but they're able to have their own flavor and create something new that's always good <clears throat> Now we're going to be talking about, I have just the Psycho 4 pack right here, but specifically we are talking about Psycho 2. So that's what we're mainly talking about right now. And yes, Psycho, if you can take out of your head that, yes, it's a very iconic film. Alfred Hitchcock's a very iconic director and Psycho was one of the first films that did a lot of big things. A lot of big things and set things into motion, be it, you know, tension, how to build tension through a movie, how to kind of subvert your expectations of your audience you know by like killing your lead actress in the middle of the movie you know what I mean and then switching up the script and kind of becomes more about Anthony Perkins character Norman Bates after that so for me Psycho 2 though is better and I highly recommend if you haven't checked it out Psycho 2 you really have to check it out first of all it's done by Tom Holland which is fantastic you know what I mean who wrote Child's Play that's just fabulous trust right there in terms of a story writer like that's just great and Anthony Perkins is at his best in that movie for real like he's great in all four of the films Psycho 1, 2, 3 and Psycho 4 the beginning Anthony Perkins is great in all of them but I think he's at his best and he really discovers the Norman Bates character in that second film and it's really cool because when you're watching it you're watching a guy who was the killer in the first film who's heavily traumatized and tormented as a child and 
fractured his whole being. And then when you see the second film, you see a man who's actually trying to heal, who's trying to join, rejoin society and actually be a working class citizen and be a normal person. But it's everybody else kind of around him that's trying to make him the boogeyman and stuff like that. So that's what I love. Psycho 2 is a fantastic ride. And like I said, highly recommend it. And that's not to discredit Alfred Hitchcock's first film. It's a fantastic film. But I think Psycho 2, in my opinion, is a superior film. <clears throat> so let's get on to another one. We're going to talk about my favorite franchise. And you know what that is, Friday the 13th. And we have to talk about Jason Lives. Yes. Jason Lives is easily better than the first film. Friday the 13th is great, and I love that first film for what it started. It's the first Jason film I ever got introduced to. Like I said, it sparked that love of franchise cinema and diving into more horror and stuff like that. So I always, always will hold Friday the 13th, that first film, in a special place in my heart. But Jason Lives right here. This is the pinnacle and peak of Jason for me. And it just has everything I want in it. And it just is so good. You know what I mean? Like the cast, the pacing of it. CJ Graham as Jason Voorhees is just epic. I like the new kind of Carpenter style Jason. Some people find that not to be a cool design of Jason. But I think it's really cool. The intro to this movie is one of the best intros to a horror film. Just flat out ever. So yeah, Jason Lives has a lot to offer. They even throw in some really campy humor in this one. And I think this is the film where it works. They really balance out the humor and the tension and the scares. And it really works. And like I said, our protagonist character played by Tom Matthews, who plays Tommy Jarvis. Fantastic. Then we have Jennifer Cook in here as well as Megan. Great characters. The sheriff, even her father. Fantastic character. So many one-liners. Like, I can't. Can't stress it enough. Jason Lives. Highly, highly recommend checking this one out. This is my favorite of the Friday the 13th franchise. We're going to put this baby over here. Stack those so they don't fall. Make sure. Just want to make sure I don't drop any of these. Now, we're on to our boy Freddy, the handsome boy himself, Freddy Krueger. Look at that beautiful, beautiful bastard right there. So for this one, we are talking about Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 specifically, and that's Freddy's Revenge. And yes, Freddy's Revenge for me is scarier. It's more entertaining. It's just got a better Freddy performance than that first film. Like, I think there's just everything about that second film to me is just pretty much better. I really do love Nancy in that first film. I love what Wes Craven started, and it's got a certain grimy, like kind of New York dirty, gritty vibe to it. Like just the film like itself, the vibe that it carries that first film. But the second film is the one where I'm like, damn, like Freddy is a like a demon. He's haunting Jesse in his mind, trying to come out through his body and make him like a conduit so that he can touch and have physical altercations and interactions with things on our plane. So Freddy Krueger in this second film is just, he's an absolute freaking nightmare, no pun intended. And like Robert England goes for it and stuff. And like that, the kill sequences, that scene with Jesse when he transforms and Grady gets killed, like that's epic, it's just pure nightmare fuel. So yes, I can't stress it enough that Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 is another sequel that I think highly, highly deserves respect because even though they take liberties with Freddy's powers, I kind of just, like I said, I view that as he's using Jesse as a conduit. So it's it's a little different. It's more like a possession film, not a slasher film. The second film definitely has more of a possession type vibe, but I think that's perfect with Nightmare on Elm Street. You know what I mean? That's what's great about Freddy Krueger is compared to some of these other slashers and some of these other franchises, his storyline is so engaging and it's so mystical. And I feel like every time you watch Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, 4, 5, and you take that journey, you learn something about the Freddy character, something new about the story or the lore, and it just pulls you in and it makes you more interested. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, just great. Fantastic film. I know another one is Dream Warriors. Dream Warriors could be argued that that's better than the first film because that's a lot of people's favorite Freddy films. So Dream Warriors is another sequel that is highly talked about that is, you know, just as good or better than Wes Craven's first Nightmare on Elm Street. But now 
we're here to talk about. The only one I don't own, like I said, those are a bunch of ones that I own and just sequels I wanted to talk about. But today, I also wanted to talk about one that is, it's a sequel to a horror film, but I would say this sequel is a little bit different in the subgenre and the tone, and that is why it's a successful sequel. So I wanted to bring this one up too, and that's Aliens. So what James Cameron did for the sequel to Ridley Scott's Alien is he kind of flipped the tone a bit and changed the subgenre. Yes, Aliens is a much more action-fueled film, but there's still huge horror elements in it. We're still dealing with xenomorphs, a lot more xenomorphs. Uh, we have Ripley having to protect a child in this film. So there's a lot to offer in Aliens. And I think what James Cameron did was he did the smart thing. He was like, I'm not going to rehash what Ridley Scott already did. You know, we're going to we're gonna throw in some action field Marines. You know what I mean? We're going to increase the amount of the xenomorphs. And like I said, you know, kind of focus on that mother-daughter bond, you know, motherhood and stuff like that. And what it's like to actually... Put another being before yourself and sacrifice yourself to save that being. You know what I mean? And a lot of people didn't understand that. Like that's that's what's so great about aliens is it takes a very simple theme of like I said motherhood and sacrificing oneself for another being kind of thing. You know, all those themes are prominent in this film with all this crazy, you know, xenomorphs and all these marines and going into space all wrapped around that. So that's what's cool. Like Aliens is just one of those fantastic films. Like I said, I wanted to talk about it. I wouldn't necessarily classify it as a horror film, but like I said, it's a sequel to a horror film that I wanted to talk about because it's, like I said, flips the genre on its head, but makes it just as interesting. And I know out there, there's a lot of people, it's either Alien or Aliens. And like I said, talking in this video you could hear my point right now it's aliens i think the sequel is a more superior film but these are just my thoughts and my opinions on these films and please let me know in the comment section what are some horror sequels that you've checked out that you've seen that you think are better than the first films are there any that i missed like i said i would love to hear from all of you and your thoughts so Drop them in the comments but be sure to like and subscribe too so you get more videos like this and more content but most importantly, have a safe and happy day. Peace out.